one of the famous, uh, and I, I'm sure this is something you've seen, one of the famous eugenic images is that of a tree. It was used as a logo for the second International Eugenic Congress and then the third International Eugenic Congress. So we believe that we cut, we, in 1945, we defeated Nazism and then we cut down the tree and eugenics was gone uh, by cutting down that eugenic tree. What we didn't realize, uh, or we didn't realize um, at the time is that what you see with the tree is only the canopy at the trunk, but you don't see the roots. The roots of that tree remained and they thrived for the past 50 years. And now it's time to cut down the roots of global eugenics. We need to dig deeper into our individual histories, collective histories, dig deeper into our histories to unmask those roots which are always there and they get nourishment. They get nourishment from people's xenophobia. They get nourishment from people's sexism. They get nourishment from people's racism. They get nourishment from states and politicians who believe that they can still create a hierarchical society according to which some of us are better and that we deserve, we are entitled and privileged and we deserve to, to get access to education, to health, to political power and others are not worthy because of the color of their skin or because they were born in a different uh, part of the world or because they speak with an accent. So we need to do that forcefully and convincingly and um, not as an academic conversation only, but truly as a public debate. Uh, among other things, communist Romania is known for the so-called 770 decree that made abortion a crime. Are there other European documents or global or international documents that align with this decree? And how did that affect their countries? In countries uh, which, uh, countries which promote a very aggressive natalist policies as communist Romania uh, tried to at the time in the 1970s, abortion is considered to be a, a crime against the nation. It's, con it's considered to be a problem uh, because it uh, reduces the number of uh, uh, a babies born, as you know. And that uh, happened, of course, to, uh, to, with horrific consequences, not only for, um, for women, but for the society at large in communist Romania. It happens uh, to some extent in Poland today, where of course abortion uh, is a, a problem and it's illegal, uh, unless for very serious medical reasons. It happened in, 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 in Catholic countries uh, it, throughout the 20th century. Um, and um, you could see how difficult it was for many Catholic, uh, many women in Catholic countries to uh, get access to abortion, um, whether it was Spain or Portugal or Northern Ireland, uh, which only recently allowed a, a decriminalized abortion. So, um, and of course, Central and South America uh, of course, abortion is still considered to be, uh, for a number of reasons, including religion, uh, 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 an affront to human dignity. And um, you have that uh, rhetoric of uh, natalism fusing with eugenics throughout the 20th century, uh, because of course eugenics wants, uh, and eugenicists advocated not only the uh, prevention of, of, of uh, or uh, the, the, the possibility of preventing um, those who have hereditary defects to continue with their line to, con to have offspring, but they also wanted those who they deem to be superior from the point of view of heredity and social standing and intellectual achievement, they wanted those to actually have more children. So there was a lot of positive, as it is called, positive eugenic policies implemented in the name of eugenics, including uh, uh, natalism or pro-natalist schemes that uh, cut across from helping people to uh, to have more children, looking after their the, looking after the mothers, looking after the children, the whole the entire puriculture uh, system we have developing in the 20th century, um, and you have that rich in political overtones. It happened in communist Romania, as you mentioned. It it happens now with uh, Viktor Orbán's Hungary where of course Hungary at the moment is a very aggressive natal natalist policies geared to Hungarian families and young Hungarians, which has very serious eugenic overtones. It basically duplicates or replicates 
most of the interwar eugenic arguments about a numerous family, worthy people, and uh, the future of the nation rests with the family. Basically, what they're saying, the future of the nation rests with the female body. We shouldn't forget eugenicists speak of reproduction, breeding, the nation, the future of the country. But what they actually mean is that we need to control female bodies because ultimately it is within female body that uh, the entire future of the race and the country and the nation is being uh, placed. And uh, so not surprisingly, not surprisingly, most of the victims of these policies, whether we're talking about abortion, we're talking about sterilization, uh, are women. Um, it is women who always fall first uh, to eugenic uh, practices and policies.